What did Elisa Lamb experience in that elevator in the Cecil Hotel? And what did police miss? We're going to break down her body language and the evidence. That's next. Welcome back to the channel, Shakers. Derek Van Shake here. You all probably saw the popular Netflix documentary, Crime Scene, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel, where they interviewed Los Angeles police and Cecil Hotel staff to solve Elisa Lamb's mysterious death. Elisa Lam was a 21-year-old Canadian college student born in Canada to parents of Chinese descent. On January 26, 2013, she arrives in Los Angeles, California to stay at the Cecil Hotel, which is right next to one of the most dangerous areas in all of Los Angeles, Skid Row. However, due to the Cecil Hotel's long, dark past, they cleverly rebranded floors four, five, and six as stay on Main to appeal to a younger hip clientele and also to distance themselves from the Cecil Hotel's long, sketchy, dark past. Is there a room here that maybe somebody hasn't died in? I never got used to that. On February 1st, 2013, the day Elisa Lamb was scheduled to check out of the Cecil Hotel and make her way to Santa Cruz, California, Elisa Lamb was reported missing. Police searched every floor and room of the hotel, coming up with nothing. But on February 19th, the hotel's maintenance staff sadly found her in the roof's water tank. After guests were complaining of discolored and odd-tasting water. A dark color like a, it had like a brown tint to it the very last time elisa lamb was seen alive was in this elevator security footage at the cecil hotel so we're gonna piece together the evidence along with breaking down her very odd body language to finally reveal what was going on in her mind that day and to reveal what the investigation seemed to have missed now let's get started the first thing that happens is the elevator door opens for elisa lamb to get in but what floor is the elevator on? Yeah, it's at the top floor. But what floor did Elisa Lamb stay on? She was on the fifth floor. She wasn't anywhere close to the top of the building. So why are we seeing her call for an elevator at the very top floor? She's 10 floors higher than she should have been. Why is she up so high in the building? And keep in mind too, this is not a swanky type of hotel where you have a lounge, a bar, a pool, or anything up on top of the building. No, it doesn't have anything like that. There were even former guests in the hotel that would say, you don't go up in the higher floors of that building because that's where some really terrible things happen. This was a place where serial killers let their hair down, like Richard Ramirez, who had come back covered in blood, and no one's got a problem with that. So why is she on the top floor in the first place? And second, how did she get to the top floor? Is there something that they don't want you to see? Is it some oversight? Seems odd that we don't have footage of her going all the way to the top of the building, but we just have her magically at the top of the building where she clearly doesn't belong because her floor is 10 floors lower. We first see Elisa Lamb casually walk into the elevator. She wasn't running into the elevator, dragging her feet or looking around or, you know, didn't know what was going on. So far, a very typical walk into the elevator. So what that tells us is that as of now, her mindset is not scared or fearful that someone's going to get her or something's going to happen to her where she has to run and quick push a button or anything like that. It doesn't seem like she's having any delusions or hallucinations right now. But when I hit play, see what you think of her body language and see what you think that means. Yeah, she goes with a big sweeping arm motion to hit the buttons. Can you guess what that means? Yeah, it's apprehension and uncertainty of what button to press. So what she's doing with this is really buying herself time to think about, well, what button am I going to press? Because the elevator's here and I got to figure out where I want to go. She doesn't know what floor she wants to go on. And it's clear that she's not in a rush, has no specific place to go at a certain time. And it just seems like she's exploring the hotel because she has nowhere to go. But how did she get to the top floor? Where is the elevator footage of her getting to the top floor? Why don't the police release that footage? This is how she got up there. This was her mindset. This is how she was acting. And I think that's very important to know. Now notice what she does. She presses every single button in that column. Again, it seems like she doesn't have any specific place to go and is just exploring and playing around with the elevator. In addition to hitting all those buttons in that column, the last button in that column is the door hold button. Did you notice the door started to close, but retracts quickly because she hit that door hold button at the very bottom. And likely unbeknownst to her, she hit it, not knowing that now the door is going to be held for about two minutes. After hitting all the buttons, she stands back in the farthest corner of the elevator, shortly expecting the elevator to start moving. But notice her body language here. Right, she's fixated on something, either something that she sees or something that she hears outside of the elevator in that hallway. Typically, when you hit the elevator buttons, what do you do? Right, you don't stand there like that, just gazing outside and what's going on outside the elevator. <laughs> Maybe start looking around, getting more comfortable with your new environment. But clearly for her, what's going on outside the elevator is of extreme interest. Now, see what you think of what she does here. 
Yes, she takes one full step forward with her head leaning forward, indicating a lot of curiosity. What is that I see? What is that going on outside the elevator? She sees something that's very curious to her. Now, when I hit play, notice her body language and see what you think of it. Yes, she takes one big lunging step out of the elevator with her left foot still in the elevator. That indicates that she wants to seek some refuge in the elevator and she's not really sure if it's safe outside in the hallway and darts her head out of the elevator almost to like catch it. In her mind, there was something that either moved very quickly down to the right side of that hallway or she heard voices and sounds coming from the right side of that hallway. But notice that she prioritized the right side of that hallway by sticking her head out to the right first and then notice what happens here. And then she quickly whips her head to the left because she may have also heard something or saw something kind of happening on that side too. But it seems that there's something on the right side of that hallway that has most of her attention. Now, when I hit play, see what you think of her body language here. Yes, she turns into a statue in the middle of the elevator, which seems to indicate that she feels like she was just caught. I didn't do anything. It wasn't me. I'm just in the middle of the elevator. So she goes into very defensive body language in fight, flight, or freeze. This is the freeze. Her hands and arms are in front of her to protect against the frontal assault. Also, her shoulders seem to rise a bit to protect the vulnerable neck. Keep in mind, she's doing all this subconsciously because she feels she's in danger. Now notice what she does next. Yes, she moves from being a statue in the center of the elevator to then moving to the very side of the elevator. That's the flight of hiding in fight, flight, or freeze. So anything coming from the right side of that hall that she believes is down there won't be able to see her very quickly. Now she hides even further to the very corner of the elevator because she surely believes that wherever she thinks is there, coming down that right side of that hallway is coming and she doesn't want it to see her because apparently it's not very good. This is all very, very sad because apparently in her mind, she believes it's there and it's out to hurt her. So she's hiding. It's very real to her because in her world, whether it's a ghost, a spirit, a delusion, a hallucination, whatever it is in her mind, it's very real and it's scary for her. She really feels that she's in danger. At this point, it's important to note that through her writings, she admitted that she has depression and bipolar 1. And she openly suggested through her writings that she doesn't want to be taking the medication. And during the autopsy, it was found that she didn't have as much medication in her system as they expected her to have in her system. So it's possible some of these delusions and some of these hallucinations were being caused because maybe she just wasn't taking the medication that she was prescribed. Now we see her take some smaller apprehensive steps where she can just peer her head outside the elevator to see what's going on down the right side of that hallway. Clearly there's something that bothers her down that right side of that hall. Whether it was something that was making noise and maybe it's not making any noise now or maybe it's making less noise, but clearly it's not something that's coming her way towards the elevator where she has to brace for it. She doesn't seem to see anything or see anything that's really harmful. So watch what she does here. All this is very sad because, you know, if she just didn't hit that door hold button, the elevator would have went down the other floors and maybe she would have had a totally different outcome. So at this point, although she's still apprehensive, she either knows now that it's not real or she feels like whatever she's experiencing and seeing and hearing in that hallway isn't harmful to her. Now watch what happens here. She bunny hops almost to surprise whatever she thought she was seeing over to now her left. We saw freeze, we saw flight. This is fight because she surely feels like whatever she's experiencing isn't very harmful to her or that she can take herself, that she's not afraid of it. So she's going to confront it physically with her hop like that. Also, it seemed like she was trying to surprise whatever she felt like she was seeing. It seems like these hallucinations are fleeting her where she almost tries to catch it. She hears a voice, but when she tries to catch it, it's fleeting and disappears really quickly. Now notice her very odd body language right here. See what you think. Some people who have saw this video have said that it looks like she's almost like doing like a square dance or something. It seems that now she has a better understanding that whatever it is that she was seeing it wasn't real. It's one of her delusions or hallucinations. So it seems that she's moving her place all around to try and trigger the hallucination and whatever she's seeing to come back or to manipulate it or to get it to react or something like that. Because if you notice, it's very deliberate full steps with her feet together almost as like testing. What if I stand here? What if I stand here? Oh, what if I stand here? Oh, what if I stand here? What are you going to do? Where are you going to appear? She seems to be testing and experimenting with whatever she thought she was seeing.
Now her arm goes flopping down to her side, indicating that she doesn't feel fearful at all anymore. Now her hands seem to go to the top of her head in frustration, confusion, and surrender. Now notice what she does as she walks into the elevator. Yes, she holds both sides of the elevator's entry, surely because of what she was seeing was not very certain, and it was fleeting, and it was moving around. She heard voices, something appears, something disappears. It was moving quickly. She couldn't see it. It was moving all around. She doesn't know what's real, what's not. So by holding the elevator like that as she's walking in, she's able to get some truth of what is real. Okay, I can feel the elevator. So what this does confirm is that a lot of what she was seeing was not in reality. She was hearing voices and all of a sudden not hearing them and everything was just moving around. So it shows how much she actually wants certainty and truth and that she's scared right now because she doesn't know what is real and what is not. Imagine being in a situation like that where you don't know what is real and what's not real. It's quite scary and very frustrating. Yeah. She then goes and hits even more buttons on the elevator, clearly trying to escape that floor, but the door is not closing because that door hold button still hit. What's interesting now is that she didn't even give the elevator a chance to even move down after she hit a whole bunch more buttons on the elevator. So it seems like at this point, she's very scattered. More of her hands going through her hair in frustration and confusion. She walks completely out of the elevator, and yeah, her body language is very interesting. Watch. Some people likened it to like almost like sorcery or something, but clearly it's something in her mind that she's seeing. It's going to be difficult to break down all that body language, but we're going to give it a try and break it down. Okay, so the first thing that we notice is that she's like flailing her arms forward. So it seems like she's trying to touch or interact with whatever she sees in front of her. So when she puts her hands out like this, it's like she's trying to give or present something to whatever she seems to be seeing. Now it seems like some kind of interaction or some kind of hand communication to whatever she believes to see. She stops, her hands go down to her sides, indicating that she probably doesn't really see it anymore. And now notice what she does. Yes, hands back up to her head in more frustration, confusion, and surrender. And that's the last we see of Elisa Lamb. And as we said in the beginning, maintenance staff sadly found her in the water tank on the roof. There's a few big problems with this footage, as well as the police's story. The police understand that, okay, she hasn't left the hotel. She's somewhere in the hotel. So then they search the entire hotel building, go all the way to the roof, and then are like, oh, I don't know where she is now. And they don't even think to go and check the water tanks on the roof. Naturally, police, of course, are thinking this could be foul play. And if it's foul play, where would you hide somebody? Well, maybe in the big water tanks that are on the roof that weren't checked yet, or at least ask how those water tanks can be accessed. Oh, no one would ever put someone in a water tank. Why not? Why couldn't someone be in a water tank? Also with the footage, the timestamps are all jumbled, so the public can't definitively say when a break in the footage occurred, such as when the door finally closes, it's obvious there's a break in the footage. Why didn't they at least tell people, hey, you know, we had to cut this footage out because of privacy reasons. Tell us, you know, you can't just put this footage out there and be like, what do you think? And then have it all edited and have the timestamps all jumbled where you can't even see that. It's like, what are you hiding? Why don't you want us to see the timestamps? It just creates so 
much extra suspiciousness with the police. Also, we understand some portions of this were sped up and slowed down. Why? What's the purpose of doing that? If you're gonna clearly tamper with the footage and you're asking for the public's help, you're gonna need to tell everyone and give a good explanation of why the footage was tampered with. But what actually happened to Elisa Lamb and what do I think happened to her? I'll be talking more about that on my more channel. So if you're not subscribed to my more channel, you may wanna do that so you don't miss out on that future video. Now in the comments, what do you think actually happened to Elisa Lamb? Let everyone know in the comments below. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button now because we don't want to miss out on new body language investigative videos that always seem to shake up YouTube. And I'll see you at the top.